a lot of our viewers requested sessions that focus on education in rural India. And so it is with great excitement that I announce our next session, Pivotal Pioneers of Rural India. We have three leaders who will share their learnings on hybrid learning models in a rural setup with us for the next half an hour. To begin this space, we have with us Vivek Kumar, co-founder and CEO of Shamatalai Foundation. Shamatalai works towards supporting communities to revive the spirit of learning in schools and outside. Welcome Vivek, over to you to start the space for us. Hello everyone, um, and thank you so much uh, Anu, and thank you everyone for you know being part of this. Uh, I just love the name Inspire Ed, um, and especially you know when schools have been reopening uh, after almost two years, uh, we need a lot of inspiration and we need to ensure that every child has just not access uh, to quality education, uh, but also access to the, uh, also, yeah, just not access, but also the access to quality education is quite important. And the theme that I'm going to talk to you about, uh, you know, how do we revive the spirit of learning uh, and also share things that, you know, we have observed in last two years in areas where we work. Uh, we work in remote tribal areas of Rajasthan and, and the entire theme of this discussion that, you know, I'm going to share with you over next eight to 10 minutes is how do we revive the spirit of learning? Learning itself is such a joyful process, uh, but unfortunately, not just in last two years, but this has been something that, you know, we have been observing over the last 10, 20, 30 years that, you know, learning has become tasked to be avoided when possible. And especially during pandemic, uh, you know, uh, it became more about access uh, and less about engagement and quality. Uh, and what we are not realizing that there's a real danger of a next generation of children growing up disliking learning, which is, which is such a natural process for humans, right? Means from day one or even before day one, I think we all are so, we have a natural tendency to learn things. And if learning becomes such a such a, a taxing job. Imagine you know uh, what the future of uh, uh, you know the education is, um, and this is something we have been doing before pandemic as well. But we realized that the need uh, of the hour is how do we uh, make children fall again uh, in love with learning? And today we are going to talk about three things. And in, in again, uh, in next seven to eight minutes, is we realize that you know there's a lot of talk and and all those who are listening to me, I'm sure you must have come across, you know, tons of data around learning loss and which is true. Children, a large part of India didn't have any access to technology. Um, the place where we work, Kotra, less than 90% people have had access to any kind of digital device. Uh, so that's, that's, that's true. And at the same time, we also observed that a lot of traditional, you know, roles felt upon girls, right? So you could see a lot of boys playing around. Uh, and so when children are coming back, there's a natural tendency. And even during pandemic, whenever we were able to engage children, there's a natural tendency to go for, you know, uh, the recovery of learning loss. Uh, but let me be honest, you know, uh, in, in, and I'm no ways trying to romanticize things, uh, uh, completely sensitive to, you know, what, what has happened in the last two years, that, that a very interesting thing also happened in the last two years, that children got a lot of free, unstructured time and especially in, in rural areas. Uh, the effect of pandemic, you know, uh, it has impacted almost everyone on this planet, but the degree and the nature of impact has been quite different. And the point that I'm trying to make here is the response then to the pandemic also needs to be based on what kind of, and what is the nature of impact that has happened. And it's completely different when it comes to rural areas. And even in rural areas, it's different in different contexts. Uh, what we realized, that even during pandemic, and you know, we are, I'm not sure if you can say we have moved into post pandemic era, uh, but it seems like uh, uh, there's a new variant just around to catch up. Um, we realized that most important function of learning was how do we build trust? And as I say, rebuilding trust and connection and reimagine community learning, which you know, you must have been listening a lot around making parents as learning partner. Now, there's a different thought that I have on that, right? because parents already have a lot to do, and how do we make them learning partner, but how, you know, we can create spaces where community learn together, which naturally also happens, but there was a genuine need of making this a lot more institutional during pandemic. And we did this through two approaches, which I'm going to share today. One is a learning festival, you know, it's a six day program 
basically to revive the spirit of learning, increase parental engagement and demonstrate what's possible and what's happening. How do you create that tension to create a demand for such things? And last and most important, right, means how do we talk about resilience, right? A word which I'm sure you must have been hearing almost every day and at times overused. Um, uh, but for children, what does resilience look like? How do you provide them the tools and process? Uh, uh, and how do you start? Where do you start with? So as I said, it was very important for us to build authentic connections. Um, and that was the core theme of everything that we, we did, right? We started with radio learning. We started with audio learning where children can come together and learn, sit in a circle, listen to something uh, and connect to them and share stories. And as I said, the challenges were different, right? So we can still manage children to come together in smaller circles and what we used to call Hamlet learning circle. But there are five what ifs that, you know, in some ways, defines our approach in last two years in, in rural India and where places where we have worked. The first is what if we create a safe space to celebrate risk and failure? Now, there's been a lot of talk around, you know, celebrating failure, but for children, it starts by taking risk from day one, you know, the, the moment they start going out, the moment they start going to swim, there's an element of risk that they take. Now, how do we start appreciating or developing muscles to appreciate risk? And that we realized was key. And when we do that, this is a very recent video of March Learning Festival. You see what happens here. Now, all the material that you see is locally made. There's a lot of science. There's a lot of uh, knowledge of math that has gone into creating this. But there's also element of chaos and there's also element of order. So this is our first design principle around all the spaces that we have created in the last one year and two years. You know, what if children are creating together? Again, when coming back to school, it's important that children get to work with each other. Because, you know, in some ways we start promoting individual actions a lot because it's easy to manage and control. What if children are exposed to many streams? You know, in some ways, uh, our focus will fall back on language and mathematics, which are very key skills, right? It allows you to learn new things. It builds your learning muscles. But at the same time, can that happen through exposing children to many streams? Can we move from this idea of mainstream uh, to exposing children to multiple streams? And you could see children are learning, they are drawing, they are making own instruments. And of course, it's important that during this process, they will pick up language, they will pick up foundational learning. And this is one of the things that I also want to share through this, that foundational learning also happens side on side when higher order learning happens. You know, you need to be curious also to get foundational learning. And I see there's a great divide that there's a lot more focus on, you know, achieving minimalistic aims of learning. I think they both can go simultaneously together. You know, this is something that we all who are in education space, you know, agree. So there's no disagreement. You know, what if the boundaries of learning expand beyond the rooms, you know, beyond the classrooms, you know, children need to be out. Uh, and, you know, especially when they're coming to classroom after two years, it's important that, you know, there is a lot more fluidity around how they're spending their time in school. What if they're taught in language, you know, they understand. I am talking about the the language that you know they speak at home but also language of love and connection right now it's quite important to rebuild that because there is certain sense of loss of trust and connection it's been two years a lot of children in rural areas had not access to any kind of structured learning over two years so there is a lot of fear imagine if i'm coming to a space and i'm so scared because i don't know what i will be asked it creates a lot of insecurity and I would be averse to that process. So how do we focus on, you know, what children have lost during the last two years, but how do we also focus on what they have learned in the last two years? And, you know, if you look at uh, last four or five slides, basically we're talking about these four values that, you know, we feel it's very important right now to inculcate in whatever we are, in whatever ways we're engaging with children. You know, we need to encourage collaboration. We need to ensure that children's right to risk muscle grows. We need to create a joyful space and we need to create equality of opportunities because there's huge, huge gender disparity that we are seeing. Uh, we, are, we are also seeing a, a huge trend in, you know, a lot of boys coming back, but the girls are still staying back because a lot of traditional roles got back to them. Uh, so this is, you know, in, in, in short, what I wanted to share. Um, uh, and the other things which we did, there's a theoretical framework which, which, you know, which we use is how do you demonstrate quality and joyful learning and at the same time advocate for participatory approach. 
during the six days, you know, there's a lot of group identity uh, that happens. There's a deep dive into different mediums, their creation days, and then obviously sharing with the community. That's the most important point. When I say community learning, it's not putting the onus on a parent because they already have a lot to deal with. It's important how they become a part of this process, how they become a part of child's learning uh, uh, process, how they engage with the entire thing, how children can demonstrate what they've been learning in school when they come back to home, how, how there's a lot more fluidity in school and community and now more than ever. Uh, so this is, uh, in short, it, it, it gives a description and yeah, I would end by this, uh, sharing this slide, uh, you know, and if you could read, you know, the, uh, and this is especially my reflection from the last two years. Here you could see a girl going through entire panchayat taking a functional solar model. A girl who was told that she is, she can't learn. Uh, and its most important lesson is that, you know, how do we make learning not a task? And unfortunately, school right now, you know, has ensured that learning is work to be avoided when possible. And, and our role uh, in, in, in coming time is to change that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vivek, for sharing the rich experiences that Shamatale has created for children in rural India. A message that I am taking back is that foundational learning needs to happen side to side with higher order learning. Um, next in the space, we have Meghna Chabla, the founder of Foster and Forge Foundation. Welcome, Meghna. Foster and Forge uh, runs programs that seek to oh, transform that seek to transform the lives of millions of school children by bolstering their education with the relevant life skills to succeed in school and beyond. Over to you, Meghna, to start off this space. Thank you so much, Anu. Thank you, Vivek. It's always fascinating to listen to you and the fine balance of chaos and uh, order makes learning very real. Thank you so much. Uh, namaskar, good evening. My name is Mekna and I represent Foster and Forge Foundation. We work on an in-service teacher fellowship uh, with 3000 teachers in Uttar Pradesh. Our program is called the Beacon Educator Fellowship. Uh, today, I'm happy to share how we became part of a people's movement in Uttar Pradesh uh, during COVID. The basic education department in Uttar Pradesh is running a campaign called e Shala under its education reform mission trainer from April 2020, uh, with the hope that learning can continue for children enrolled in classes one to eight. And the mission trainer's e Shala study material has been provided to students and parents in six stages through the channels of Dur Darshan, Akashwani, and WhatsApp. Also community, Mohalla classes have been conducted successfully by the teachers. Community volunteers, Prerna Sathis were also inducted during one of the stages of e Shala. As Foster and Forge, we collaborated with our Beacon teachers on ground and supported them to implement different phases of e Shala. I would now like to invite uh, Bhavna Ma'am who is a state resource from Rampur district, uh, Uttar Pradesh, uh, to share the initiatives in detail. Welcome, Bhavna ma'am. Uh, thank you, Meghna ma'am. This webinar is a good one. This is Meghna ma'am. हम पिछले दो सालों में इस कोविड पैंडेमिक के माध्यम से बहुत ज्यादा चैलेंजिंग फेज से गुजरे हैं उसके इसी दौर में हमारी जो ग्रामीण परिवेश की जो बच्चों की लर्निंग है उस गैप को कैसे कम किया जाए इसको डिफरेंट फेजेस में डिफरेंट तरीके से कि कब क्या चीज हम पॉसिबिलिटी है कि जिससे हम ये ओवरकम कर सकें वो सारे के सारे प्रावधानों को उन सारी विधाओं को हमने हमारे जो सरकार है उसने पूरी तरह से इंप्लीमेंट करके हम सभी के माध्यम से बच्चों तक पहुंचाने की कोशिश की है तो बेसिक एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट में अगर ई पाठशाला की बात करें तो 
इस कोविड पेंडेमिक के जरिए हमारी जो लर्निंग थी वो गैप धीरे धीरे बड़ा होता चला जा रहा था सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज था कि ग्रामीण परिवेश में हम लोग बच्चों के पास में रिसोर्सेज नहीं थे उन रिसोर्सेज को आ, के ना होने पर भी कैसे उन तक अपनी पहुंच बनाई जाए ये एक बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज था जिससे कि आ, हम सभी ने मिलकर अः दूरदर्शन और आकाशवाणी के प्रोग्राम के जरिए उन तक पहुंचाने की कोशिश की गई जिन बच्चों के पास में उनके पेरेंट्स के पास में स्मार्टफोन थे जो रिसोर्सेज अवेलेबल थे उनको व्हाट्सएप के माध्यम से वो कंटेंट जो था वो आ, भेजा गया आ, उन पेरेंट्स के लिए जिन पेरेंट्स के पास में हमारे व्हाट्सएप पे नहीं था स्मार्टफोन भी नहीं था हमारे टीचर्स ने उन्हें स्कूल में बुलाकर और कुछ ग्रुपिंग में उनको वो जो कंटेंट था उसको भेजकर और इस मुहिम को जारी रखा तो ये हमारा कुछ ई पाठशाला से रिलेटेड चीजें थी कि सिक्स स्टेजेस में क्रमशः धीरे धीरे करके वो किस प्रकार से आगे बढ़ी कि आ, टीवी पर एक पर्टिकुलर टाइम शॉट जो था वो हर एक बच्चे को बताया गया कि इस समय निर्धारित पर आपसे आपके कक्षा से संबंधित जो प्रोग्राम है वो आना है उस मुहिम में हमारे जो ग्राम प्रधान थे या जो लोकल कम्युनिटी थी उन्होंने भी बड़ा बढ़ चढ़कर उसमें भाग लिया और उसको एक एक साथ एक कॉमन प्लेस पर भी कई स्थानों में ये चीज हुई कि एक उनको जो प्रोग्राम थे वो बच्चों तक पहुंचाने की कोशिश की गई क्योंकि बहुत सारे बच्चे हमारे ग्रामीण परिवेश में ऐसे हैं जिनके पास रिसोर्सेज की कमी रहती है इससे हम सभी लोग पूर्णता वाकिफ हैं साथ ही साथ हमारी जो मोहल्ला पाठशाला थी मोहल्ला क्लासेस थी उसको हमारे बच्चे जो थे जो टीचर्स थे उन्होंने कंटिन्यू जारी रखा क्योंकि किसी स्थान विशेष किसी सुरक्षित स्थान को सॉर्ट आउट करके उस वहां पर हमारे जो ग्रुपिंग में छोटे छोटे ग्रुप के माध्यम से बच्चों को पढ़ाया गया ताकि ये जो मुहिम है वो रुके नहीं लगातार उनके जो लर्निंग गैप है उसको पूरी तरह से पूरी तरह से नहीं तो कुछ कुछ तो फिल करने की पूरी तरह कोशिश की गई फिर हम एक प्रेरणा साथी का जो कॉन्सेप्ट है वो बहुत मायने रखता है और बड़ा इम्पोर्टेंट रहा हमारी इस पूरी की पूरी सिस्टम में कि जो हमारे विद्यालय का जो एच एम है हेडमास्टर या जो प्रधानाध्यापक है उन्होंने ही एक किसी वेल विशर को किसी स्वेच्छा से काम करने वाले व्यक्ति को आइडेंटिफाई करा कम्युनिटी में से और उस कम्युनिटी मेंबर को प्रेरणा साथी का नाम दिया गया जिसके के माध्यम से जिनके पास रिसोर्सेज नहीं थे जो कि बच्चों को आधे या पौन घंटे का समय दे करके कुछ कुछ ये जो लर्निंग गैप है उसको फिल करने की पूरी तरह से उसमें अपना योगदान दे सके तो उस प्रेरणा साथी के स्मार्टफोन के माध्यम से बच्चों तक हमारा जो कंटेंट था वो पहुंचाने का काम उसने बहुत बखूबी निभाया और कुछ स्थानों में इस चीज को बहुत बेहतर तरीके से इम्प्लीमेंट किया गया ये है हमारा फिर हम बात करेंगे हंड्रेड डेज रीडिंग कैंपेन की जिसको कि भारत सरकार के द्वारा पूरे देश में लागू किया गया है जैसा कि हम सभी लोग जानते हैं कि जो स्टार्टिंग के साल होते हैं किसी भी बच्चे की पढ़ाई के वो सीखने के लिए पड़ता है और जो बाद के कक्षा तीन से क्लास थर्ड के बाद के जो इयर्स होते हैं उसमें वो पढ़ने के लिए सीखता है तो सीखने के लिए पढ़ता है तो ये जो चीज है पढ़ना ये जो स्किल है ये इतनी ज्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट हो जाती है कि इसके बिना बाकी सब चीजें जो हैं इस पढ़ाई जो है वो बहुत ज्यादा मुश्किल हो जाती है तो रीडिंग कैंपेन को एक मुहिम की तरह चलाया गया जिसको कि जनवरी माह से चलाया गया है और अप्रैल तक इसको गतिविधियों इससे संबंधित जो गतिविधियां हैं वो हमारे टीचर्स के द्वारा बच्चों के बीच में साझा की जाती है इसमें खास बात यह है कि एक कैलेंडर भी अभिभावकों के साथ भी साझा किया जाता है जिसमें कि छोटी छोटी सी एक्टिविटीज हैं पर डे के हिसाब से उनको कुछ बताने के लिए उसको एक्टिविटी को मेंशन किया गया है उसमें ताकि कम्युनिटी को भी एक जोड़ते हुए उनके सहायता से उनकी हेल्प से हम आगे बढ़े क्योंकि बिना समुदाय के सहयोग के बच्चों की शिक्षा दीक्षा एक 
बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज होता है एक अध्यापक के लिए तो उनको भी जोड़ना एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण पहल थी तो इस हंड्रेड डेज रीडिंग कैंपेन के जरिए जहाँ पे बच्चों को छोटे छोटे व्हाट्सएप के माध्यम से एक लिंक प्रोवाइड कराए जाते हैं जिसमें कि बच्चे उस रीडिंग कंटेंट को पढ़ते हैं उस रीडिंग कंटेंट को पढ़ने के बाद में उससे संबंधित स्किट बच्चों से तैयार कराए जाते हैं छोटी छोटी कठपुतलियां बना करके बच्चे जो हैं या मुखौटे बना करके उस जो पढ़े हुए कंटेंट को है उसको उसका प्रदर्शन करते हैं तो ये छोटी छोटी सी एक्टिविटी को पूरा इकट्ठा करके इस पूरी की पूरी जो लर्निंग गैप था जो पिछले दो सालों में हम सभी ने अपने आसपास देखा है महसूस किया है और उसको कम करने की पूरी तरह से कोशिश की गई है ताकि हम सभी लोग मिल करके इस पूरी मुहिम को एक जन आंदोलन का रूप दे सकें तो नई उम्मीदों से रोशन नया सवेरा हो और हर किसी के मन में उमंगों का डेरा हो तो इन्हीं शब्दों के साथ में एक जन मुहिम और एक मुस्कान के साथ हम सभी अपने बच्चों का दोबारा से स्वागत करने के लिए तैयार हैं ताकि वो इस ये जो लर्निंग गैप है उसको पूरी तरह से मिटाकर हम एक सशक्त भारत का निर्माण कर पाए ओवर टू मेघना मैम थैंक यू Thank you so much, uh, Bhavna, ma'am. Uh, we have been part of this grand movement all through COVID, and uh, I am very happy to have been part of this along with our team and the weekend teachers. Thank you, Bhavna, ma'am, for sharing in detail all uh, the initiatives. Over to you, uh, Anu. Thank you, Meghna and Bhavna, for taking time to join us today and sharing your stories. Mission Prerna is doing some ground breaking programs, and the hundred uh, days reading campaign is such a fantastic and simple idea. Finally, we have Ravi Danuka, co-founder of I Saksham Education and Learning Foundation. I Saksham works with the mission of enabling young women's leadership to solve development problems in underprivileged areas of India. Welcome, Ravi, and over to you for this next part. Ravi, you're on mute. Uh, can you unmute yourself, please? Sorry, I said a few words while I was unmute. I said thanks, Meghna, for passing on the baton and sharing your stories of COVID times. Uh, and thanks, Anu, for introducing I Saksham. Uh, as you said, the main purpose of I Saksham is to create young women as leaders of change in their communities. Today, I'll be sharing what they did. during the periods of covid and how it further become a very strong testimony of if you give them a baton to drive change what is it that they can do in their communities we all know that the first phase was very chaotic we all were striving to do something we also went through a couple of weeks of chaos and confusion and when we were trying to explore what is it that can work for the communities for the very backward geographies that we were present in and we thought why not check with the parents directly we picked up our phone and reached out to 500 parents to understand their educational behavior during those difficult times which were very surprising uh, for the parents as well and we had some interesting learnings contrary to our beliefs we found out that more than 70% of children despite the sudden closure of schools were engaged in some sort of activities good bad does not matter but they were doing something in their homes but while they their entire wave of edtech was on throughout the country we realized that only 50% of our kids the families have access to smartphones forget how many kids could have had an access to that smartphone so so we figured out why not try something that can work in those communities and which is also which also provides an equitable access so we picked up mobile phone basic mobile phone as the first starting point where our edu leaders would just tell them stories over the phone and would do innovative projects 
the the idea of the telephonic based pedagogy delivery would only be to facilitate what kids can do in their immediate surroundings and context it would be a mix of activity based learning plus plus ed tech is my slide automatically moving sorry yeah so it had yes. four acha it had four components we prepared edu leaders we find out the right digital content for them we created session plans that was an activity and contextual based and then we encourage them to engage with parents and this is some snapshot shots of how their journey in the first wave uh, turned out to be for every 2 hours they continue to engage with children in a group of 5 to 7 would tell them stories and would give them give them those learning activities which their parents could assist them in their homes we encouraged elders to continue to engage with kids share stories give them those activities that they can do uh, while while being in their homes post this first wave while the restrictions eased we continued with the same philosophy and here we became more hands on with the activity based learning projects so based on partnerships with other organizations like education for all mantra for change and through mahila samakya network in bihar we designed some very small contextual projects which children then started doing it it was a package of 12 such projects spread over 3 to 4 weeks and then just a glimpses of what they could do while being in their homes without necessarily being facilitated by a teacher they created their own books of alphabets have to wait they learnt about covid and necessary precautions they draw pictures of their body so their learning uh, continue this is snapshot of how parents begin to help uh, their kids using stories through through this ed tech and we could sense a very high sense of involvement and participation by parents it was very contrary to a general perception that parents had their own high levels of stress and might be education not their first priority but once given an opportunity and a systemic access and facilitation support we could sense it could no get to know a huge sense of uh, participation these are some of the uh, testimonials live on experiences that they have shared so for example Uh, Lalita Kumari from Bihar saying, "मेरे बच्चे अब तो मोबाइल फोन से ही पढ़ते हैं पहले तो सिर्फ खेलते रहते थे and it's I am also learning along with my kids. More than the tech intervention, the entire process also became a story of hope that that we can also do something. That the services can also reach out to us while there was a lot of havoc related to uh, delivery of COVID relief." services and there are some children sharing how learning through that project triggered creativity give them an also sense of participation uh, despite the very harsh external um, reality i am also very happy to share that just a few months after this first phase of of covid um, happened we had a national level competition organized by dav school chennai and tickling's foundation more than 10000 students would have participated in that event and children of our edu leaders got a national level recognition for the project videos that they supported they submitted so how edu leaders intervened during the periods of covid lead to such a speedy pace of learning that children started getting the recognition for their creativity and for their work so this is our core learning from the entire um exercise how do you see tech tech also needs a lot of contextual understanding and human facilitation to make it successful we cannot see tech based interventions only in isolation and this is how education is all about it's a social process even the use of technology needs the right anchor and how do you employ it and based on your understanding of the context you can always come up with innovative solutions and then this tough times also forces you to be creative and and they bring something new in your life journey which otherwise you might not have realized so for in our case it was more about how such local change agents and how parents could come together 
to trigger this uh, wide scale change which otherwise as an organization would have taken us some more months to realize the active participation of parents and to trigger this so this was all uh, from my side and so thank thank you for giving me an opportunity to share the intervention of i section thank you ravi for sharing your insights and experiences with i section thank you once again vivek meghna and ravi for leading this session on rural uh, learning for all